Hi, dear Tinkers! I am so happy to share with you this another beautiful insight about our being as human persons. In this video edition, I am going to discuss the philosophical understanding of the human person. Knowing this may help us better understand ourselves that may lead to self-actualization and transcendence. First, let us talk about the two approaches to philosophical study of the human person, which are the metaphysical and the existential approach. The metaphysical approach is a type of philosophical approach which focuses on the kind of substance or material and capacities that uniquely make up a human person. It examines the essential components of a human person and deals with the what of a human person. While on the other hand, the existential approach is a type of philosophical approach which focuses on the kind of life or mode of existence that is unique to a human person. It examines the essential features of the human way of life and dealing with the who of the human person. There are three philosophical views on the human person and these are First, the disembodied spirit view. Second, the unspirited view. And third, the embodied spirit view. Allow me to discuss them one by one. The unspirited body view is an ideology that a human person is essentially just his or her body and nothing more. This position naturally results from the belief that humans do not have a spiritual component because there is no such thing as a spirit. Thus, a human person is essentially just his or her body. On the other hand, this embodied spirit is an ideology that a human person is essentially just his or her spirit. This view results from the belief that while the body is dependent on the spirit, the spirit is not dependent on the body. Meaning, the body will die if there is no spirit, but the spirit will survive or remain even if there is no body. This view claims that it is the spirit that essentially defines the human person. Furthermore, the embodied spirit view is an ideology that a human person is essentially the unity of the body and the spirit. This view results from the belief that the body and the spirit cannot exist independently of one another, that is, each will not survive in the absence of the other. Also, this is the most acceptable reason because it maintains human freedom and it gives importance to the soul. There are many great philosophers who have made outstanding propositions to understand the human person. Let us discover each of their point of view. Have you heard the term dualism? In the philosophy of the mind, this view believes that the spirit, which was called soul by Plato but mind by Descartes, and the body are two different kinds of entities or substances in that the body is physical while the spirit or the soul or mind is non-physical. Plato made distinct claims about the soul. First, he claimed that the soul must be immortal. Otherwise, we can never explain the nature of knowledge as recollection or that to learn is to remember. Second, he postulated that souls are immaterial or non-physical. Hence, they are not composed of parts and if they are not composed of parts, then 
they cannot decompose and thus cannot die. On the other note, René Descartes made a proposition on the disembodied spirit view, wherein he viewed reality as two different types of substances, namely, mind, which is the non-physical kind, and the matter, which is the physical kind. Mind is conscious but not extended in space, which means it is not observable or quantifiable, while the matter is extended in space but not conscious. He also coined the phrase, I think, therefore, I am. Furthermore, Aristotle made a significant proposition in the embodied spirit view. He regarded the soul as the principle or cause of life, meaning the soul is what gives life to something. Moreover, the body is the person's matter aspect or matter, while the soul is his or her formal aspect or form. Specifically, the form is the natural capacity, ability, and function of something, while the matter is the kind of material that is made of. Aristotle distinguished between plants, animals, and man. Particularly, the plants are the vegetative or nutritive soul, enables to perform activities necessary for nourishment, growth, and reproduction, while the animals are the sensitive soul, enables to perform that of vegetative plus sensation and locomotion. And finally, the man is a rational soul, enables abilities that of animals plus rational thinking. For the most part, Aristotle does not believe in immortality. While in the embodied spirit view, St. Thomas Aquinas added that the rational soul of the humans has dual nature. There is a part of it that is dependent on the body, but there is also a part of it that is not dependent on the body. He also believed that while the vegetative and sensitive souls are mortal, the rational souls are immortal that the soul that survives after the death of the human body is no longer a human person but a different and immortal entity. He also called the human souls as subsistent rather than a substance to indicate that the human soul, though immortal, is incomplete by nature. I hope you find it amazing to learn the philosophical side of our being as human persons. Thank you for watching. If you find this video relevant, do not forget to hit like and subscribe. Bye!